will play the intro, and then we'll get Hello, officially Milton's started. Metron. Metron means measure and sphere of influence, and we want to help you find your Metron. Through motivation, enlightenment, transcendence, renewal, outreach, and networking. We're excited to have you here today, and hope you enjoy the service. Now, you officially are welcome to Metron. Again, give yourselves a big hand. <laughs> That's more like it. Please remain standing, and we're going to say uh, the metaphysical Lord's Prayer together. Uh, it's just all, all it is. It's still your basic Lord's Prayer. It just expounds a little bit more on deeper meanings. Let's say this together uh, before we introduce our guest. Our Father, who art in heaven, presence of divine love and light that lives within us and within all of life, name. We invoke the powerful, creative nature of all that is sacred and holy. Thy kingdom come. We embrace the healing essence that is the kingdom of heaven within us. Thy will be done. We accept our greatest good as we align with our divine nature. On earth as it is in heaven, knowing that the affairs of our lives reflect our evolving consciousness. Give us this day our daily bread. Each day we receive great blessings from within and throughout all the activities of our lives. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We accept the divine nature of all things and all people, including ourselves, as we move away from judgment and toward greater awareness of divine presence. And lead us not into temptation. We shall be vigilant in expressing and experiencing the oneness with all life. But deliver us from evil as we are learning to live without fault finding and suffering. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. For we accept the consciousness of divine perfection with all its power and glory right here, right now, and forever. Amen. And so it is. Uh, please just remain standing for a moment. I'm glad to see uh, our friend Ed, who came down from Knoxville to be with us today, and Michael Shepard, who we haven't seen for a long time. He's one of our pastors at Church of the Now and still still holds credentials with us. I, I still, I, I'm bona fide. I'm still a bishop, still cover ministries, and uh, Michael is one of them. It's good to see him. And um, I'll, I'll mention <coughs> we uh, lost a couple of people since we were together last, but I don't want to forget that um, uh, Marty's brother passed, and he had been sick for a while. But I talked to her, so I wanted to keep. I want to be sure that I mentioned that today. You know, you knew about Das, and uh, um, I'll say s something about her. But somebody actually this morning uh, requested that. Um, Y'all know who da Das is, the very outspoken person who, last time we were here, remember when I was mentioning, yeah, that was, that was on uh, my birthday. Uh, she was the one who, um, when I was talking about somebody trying to s steal money from me on PayPal, she was like, name names, Bishop, name names. <laughs> and she always wanted to go ghetto. She says, you tell me where they are. And I was afraid to tell her because I thought, I think she, when she said, I got your back, I think she could go all ghetto on somebody and, and actually, but uh, yeah, she's old, not old school Brooklyn, um, but uh, somebody requested uh, today in honor of her that uh, Marshall sing Grandma's Hand, so he's going to do that in honor of her, and uh, this morning, uh, one of my best friends transitioned, and so it's been, it's been quite a week, but we are all here, and we are alive, and if I'm not hugging you again, I'm not I'm not basket back in mask mode yet, but I'm not really in close hugging mode either. So uh, y'all move at your own your own pace with that. Uh, if you if you want to mask up, I support that. If you don't, as I cough, <coughs> that's just a cough. Um, you can do that as well. But uh, we are here, and I'll say more about uh, about Das later. But without any further ado, I'm <coughs> always happy to have somebody who's a friend and a brother and kind of like a son. He's friends with my sons, especially with Jonah, and so I feel I feel a lot of connections to him. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I'm going to introduce him so I can stop coughing. 
without any further ado, would you please welcome the one, the only, Marshall Ruffin. Marshall, come sing for us.
to a land on God's celestial throne. so glad and happy when we meet Lord I you know I fly away no more cold iron shackles on my feet oh, 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 oh when I fly church on Sunday morning. Grandma's hand played that tambourine so well. Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She'd say, why you run so fast? 
might fall on a piece of grass, might be a snake down there in the grass, grass, grass. Grandma's hands would soothe the local unwed mothers. <laughs> Grandma's hands used to ache sometimes and swell. Oh, Grandma's hands would lift her face and tell her Oh, baby, Grandma understands that you think you really love that man. You better put yourself in the good Lord's hands, Grandma's hands. Just a Marshall Ruffin. Thanks, Doug. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Let me get, get my composure back. Marshall, the DOS was the one. Marshall. Yeah. Um. She was always outrageous and outspoken. <clears throat> when I posted a thing about her passing, I said, I'm sure at the induction orientation meeting in heaven, she's probably already said something inappropriate and has been shushed by an angel, and she still doesn't care. But one time, Marshall told me <clears throat> that, um, he said, I've never seen such a uh, cooperative crowd. He said, you know, I'm used to people... Uh, giving feedback on gospel songs but he's also singing like a secular song about you know leave that skanky girl alone and Doss would be like leave her alone Jesus you know just like, <laughs> he never said those lyrics but I'm just saying so, you know anyway they had a visitation for her at Wheeler Funeral Home I, went, I came back early from Daytona and went to that and then if you want they're, they're doing something informal for her Go to Beth's page, and she's posted about there. It's going to be at there uh, where they live. But that was, uh, I don't know what, I didn't even see what pictures you put up there. There was one, do you, do you have the other ones up? Yeah, that was that. I also, there was, there was one that I posted. There was some that I posted I wanted I wanted to show, but I don't know if they're, um, that's okay. Uh, it was It was just one that she was, 
She was up here saying something, and I, I could tell by my reaction it was a shocker, whatever she had just said. So <laughs> the thing that everybody is thinking, Doss would just go ahead and say it. She just didn't care. Um, also, I wanted to, I don't know, it's top of my page, Michelle, my, my friend Jeff at Transition this morning. It's been, been a lot this week. And uh, I've known him for like over <coughs> a really long time. And uh, he watches every Sunday. He, he, By the way, Doss had, a, I think right after we met last time, she had a stroke. And she's been in hospital and she had another one. She's had some health issues for a while. And um, that's okay if you can't find it. I should have. I just assumed you have it. Um, my, what's that? Okay. Uh, that's that's my friend Jeff. That he we he used to live with me for a while, and his wife texted me this morning and said that he passed. He had never smoked, but he had lung cancer, and it was a really bizarre thing. He was, um, and uh, he texted me. I don't know if you got. If, do you see a picture of? There's a photo uh, thing of a text. Remember we tell telling me the. St- remember me telling the story about. A friend of mine insisting that I learn how to ski, and he took me skiing, and he didn't tell me when to jump out of the lift, and I went up to the black diamond. That was him. Uh, it, it should be. There's four of them right there together, Michelle. Um, anyway, that was him. And, um, yeah, he sent me this text earlier this week, and I knew he was saying goodbye. Um, and I wanted to go see him. He didn't. He didn't want me to see him like, like he looked, he'd been a big bodybuilder, and uh, he wanted to. He wanted me to remember him a certain way, and so. But I'll probably go down to his service Wednesday. I'm gonna work it all out this week. Olivia's flying in this week, so I've got to take her. Yeah, that was us skiing. That was right before. That's when I was still smiling. That was right before I went to the Black Diamond Slope. If you don't know the story, you know there's what is there? You start with green, I think. And then you go up to blue. Is that right? Or you start with blue and go up to green. Okay. So I, on the the green one, I'd done so well. He said, let's, I said, I think you're ready for the blue. I said, I don't know. He said, just let's just try it. So we're going up the lift, and uh, he jumps out. And I, and I said, where did you go? He said, you're supposed to jump out as I keep going up. I said, you didn't say. He said, I just thought you knew. I said, no, I've never done this before. You didn't tell me. I said, what do I do up at the top? He said, I don't know. I've never been up that far. I said, oh, God. So I get all the way up to the black diamond slope, which the it, it looked perpendicular. I mean, it's like there wasn't even any slant to it. So I got up there. I said, look, I've, this is a terrible mistake. I said, I've, I've never skied before, and I didn't know to jump out of the lift. Can I just take the lift back down? He said, no, not unless you break something. I said, are you kidding? I said, I don't know how to ski. He said, you have to figure it out. And I don't know how I got down that mountain. But when I did, I took those skis off. I was not smiling like that. <laughs> I have not been back. You ever been so scared that you're calling his name and cussing like every other breath? Like just <laughs> It was like it was a trip. But anyway, that was that was Jeff, and so they're all on the other side now. So, oh, that was, uh, he has an identical twin brother. That's his brother, John. I just saw him last week. He, he drove down from New York to hear my mom speak in Columbus. We were fishing in Panama City. That's one of Jeff's sons. Oh, that was Doss. <laughs> you could tell whatever she had just said. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you just said that out loud. And she didn't care. I love that picture. That was at our uh, second anniversary for Metro, and, and she I think she got him sang a song that day, and she was uh, a complete original. She's just like, just totally herself, and um, always wanted to make sure I knew she had my back. And uh, so, anyway, I pray for uh, Gigi. I, it's it's also interesting this week because she and Gigi have been together since high school, and I married them a few years ago. Um, I don't know, seven years ago maybe. And um, it's just interesting right now where marriage equality is being threatened. Uh, but when I saw G 
usually at the uh, funeral home, I was so happy that they did get married because if you know if you've been married and suddenly the Supreme Court decides you're not, you you better get a will and you know figure out some stuff. And um, you know I haven't thought it that far ahead, but you know I've, I've shopped a little health insurance because I'm I'm on my husband's health insurance who may not be my husband a month from now. So that's uh, and can I just say I don't you know I don't God knows I'm not in the mood to be controversial, but if you're on I mean, I see the stuff that people post. If you're on other people's pages applauding the Supreme Court for straightening out America, please unfriend me and don't call me your pastor because I don't think of myself as your pastor. I think of your, I think of you as a threat. So uh, we need to, you know, and I, I say that in, uh, you know, in humility, but I take my marriage very seriously and the thought that it can just be, you know, with a stroke of a pen, like, no, you're not. And and not just us. I mean, you, you some of you all remember um, Matthew and Larry that used to come to uh, church in the midtown. Those guys, that, they're the only people they've ever dated. I mean, they've been their life together, and they own property together. And uh, Anyway, just um, please be aware that I do see the other stuff you post. By all means, don't tell me you love me because you don't. Uh, and you know you can um, you can unfriendly lovingly, but just go ahead and <laughs> just go ahead and do that, because <laughs> I don't I don't want to see that. All right, enough enough of that. Let's bring the room back up. Um, a month, l- a little over a month from now, we will be in St. Simons uh, for Meditation Weekend number fifteen, and uh, super excited about that. This is the fourth time we've gone to St. Simons for one of these, and there's something about. The, the magic of St. Simon's added with the the synergy of, uh, I love Jekyll, I love all the other places we've gone, but there is something special about St. Simon's. And every time we've gone there, there's been, I can't promise it's going to happen again, but there's been some sign in the heavens. I mean, every time, either a blue moon or a double rainbow or something has happened. And um, whether that happens or not, it's, it's guaranteed it's going to be a, a, a spectacular event. Uh, we've already got a really, at this point, the largest group I've ever had signed up this far in advance to go. So uh, that's going to be um, August 6th and 7th. And um, I know most of you already have your rooms booked, so we're very excited about that. All right? And uh, also our outreach uh, this month, we've, we've supported them a couple of times before, but I wanted to go ahead and send support this month to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. They just do excellent work, and when I, you know, last month we sent to Red Cross to help with the shooting in uh, Texas, but uh, anytime I'm not exactly sure where I want the money to go, St. Jude's is just always a good one to fall back on because they, they just do incredible work, so uh, that's where your, uh, that's where the money be going this, uh, this month. Was that everything I needed to announce, I believe? I'm holding my phone because it's something I want to read off my phone this morning. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you all for being here, by the way. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. And I hope everybody has a happy 4th of July. uh, Brenda asked if we were running tomorrow. We're not. Ken's, he's taking a healing with his back. So he, he, since he's not going to run, I don't want to run. I mean, I'm I'm blaming. (laughs) I am willing to lay down my life. But it's not fun without him, you know. So, um, and we that was the first time I ran it in, in 1989, and I ran it 30, 30 years after that. So uh, last year we didn't run it because of COVID, and this year because uh, of this. We may or may not be back next year. With I don't know. I've got uh, an entire drawer full of T-shirts that I have uh, acquired over the years. But um, I think that's everything. Is that everything I needed to announce? All right. Are we ready for the podcast? Welcome to the Metron Live podcast, coming to you live from beautiful, historic Midtown Atlanta. Metron people, would you please welcome the podcast people who are listening? And again, our thanks to Charles McFall, the rock god of podcasting, who makes this possible and has for many years now. All of my tech team is just, they're, they're uh, the best ever. And I, anything I ask them to do, they do it uh, in excellence. I mean, it's really... 
the fact that they come in here every week and create a space where we can stream live, well, we did it for every week for years. Now we're doing it once a month. But still, I mean, it's really kind of like a Jedi trick. You know, it's like it's amazing what they're able to pull off here. So uh, I believe they know how much we all appreciate them. But once again, tech team, you guys rock. Thank you. All right. Uh, I want to talk to you today about um, time, timelessness. Uh, my title this morning is Living Outside of Time. Uh, I want to, let me go ahead and read this to you so I can put my phone down. Uh, this was a meditation that I wrote this week. Um, you know, July 1st marks exactly one half of the year. That means one half of 2022 is over, and now we enter the second half. And... Um, so I wrote this, uh, I was thinking about that this week, and uh, uh, one day this, uh, whenever I got back from um, Daytona, which we, we've been in, I went down for several days uh, spent with Ken and his extended family. It's a lot of people, it's like 28 people, um, a lot. Um, that was fun, they're, they're sweet, and uh, but I came on back. Um, the scripture I used was Matthew 634 out of the voice that says, do not worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Living faithfully is a large enough task for today. So it says, happy July. Exactly half of the year is over as of today. And now we begin the second half. Perhaps you made New Year's resolutions six months ago and maybe you have held to them. Maybe or probably you haven't. As a rule, intentions are better and more effective than resolutions. Resolutions have more to do with the passage of time and signposts along the way that designate that passage. Our minds love to linger in the past and jump ahead to the future. And for the most part, resolutions only help encourage that behavior. Resolutions are always related to a fear from a conditioned past or a worry about the future. Setting intentions is a deeper concept of a bigger picture than making resolutions. Intentions transcend time. Sankalpa, it's a word, S-A-N-K-A-L-P-A, -A -A, is the Sanskrit word for intention. And it's generated for your soul's growth. Resolutions are about time awareness. Intentions are about living in the now. A good intention nurtures your consciousness and has the power to significantly raise your awareness. When you set an intention, you don't have to worry about your actions and you're not bound to time restraints and deadlines for manifestation. It's been said that a righteous intention creates a righteous action. You can't ignore the swift passage of time, and you shouldn't. You can embrace the philosophical notion that time isn't actually a real thing, but you still have to live with clocks and calendars and seasons and aging and all the other things that have to do with time. Six months ago, you may have boldly declared, this is going to be my year. And when I posted this, I re it reminded me of a meme that somebody posted about, um, I think it was last year. They said, dear COVID year. At the beginning of the year, I said, this is going to be my year. And now, a year later, I'm like, everybody, please be quiet. <laughs> Exit softly. Something like that. Um, and here at the midpoint of it, you may feel that like those words are actually mocking you because none of your resolutions have been realized. Change, the, change that energy today. Let th that idea go. Be spontaneous and embrace the present. You've no doubt heard the quote that says you can't dive into the same river twice because a river is always changing, and the same is true of human consciousness. It is always changing. In spite of any of the challenges you faced in the first half of 2022, be grateful for how far you've come this year. But don't forget to embrace the present moment and stop spending your time chasing the unknown future. Relax. Look around. You are here, and that's enough for now. And even in setting your intentions, stop trying to predict what's coming. Stop trying to micromanage things that are beyond your control. You heard me? Um, when you try to determine what your future holds, you can actually end up destroying that very future, the very one you're looking forward to. Your tomorrow has its own beauty in life. The second half of 2022 has its own mystery. If you've already decided what your tomorrow holds today, you aren't doing it any justice. Live your best intentional life, but let tomorrow take its own course. Live faithfully in the amazing now. 
so I wanted to share that with you. And before, thank you. Um, there's, I'm going to show you this scripture out of Ecclesiastes. I just have two points, and then I'm going to show you a little TikTok video. Um, <laughs> it is. It's TikTok. But um, there's a lot of things I could, a lot of scriptures I could use about time. Like um, in Joel's prophecy, Joel chapter 2, that Peter quotes on the day of Pentecost. He, um, he says, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten away. Not just the things, but the years. I, I'll actually give time back to you. What you think you lost in time, I'll restore that to you. Paul referred to something similar in Ephesians where he said, re, he used the phrase redeeming the time because the days are evil. Um, a lot of times I use the quote, I mean the, um, uh, the story of Lazarus. Uh, Jesus had a definite, I do not believe Jesus was gay. I believe Jesus definitely had a bromance with Lazarus. He was he, they were definitely buds because the, um, the disciples came to Jesus and said, the one you love is sick. And uh, he said, well, it's not a sickness unto death. And uh, then Lazarus dies. And not one, not two, not three, but four days later, Jesus finally uh, arrives at the home of Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. He was friends with all three of them, he stayed in their house. And we, we don't have, a, you have to kind of fill in the blanks on it, but they, they definitely were tight. Um, and again, I'm nothing that would be out of the ordinary, just like, you know, it's like somebody saying that that's my boy, you know, it's like, you know, you're my dog or whatever. What, I don't know what people say now, but that's, that's who Lazarus was to Jesus. And, um, and when Jesus sees the tomb, he weeps, you know, cause that was his, that was his bud. Uh, and Lazarus sister comes out and says, if you had, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And he says, I said, he said, well, he'll live again. And she says, well, I know he'll live in the resurrection. And Jesus says, well, I am the resurrection. He, he says, stop thinking of the resurrection. It was not a sickness unto death. And actually, even though Lazarus died, it still was not a sickness unto death. Ultimately, that sickness did not kill him, even though he was dead for about four days. And it kind of reminds me, I know I've told you this story way too many times, but um, a couple of years ago when we were in the, the mountains with my friend Howie and, and uh, his and his significant other Jerry, we all went uh, tubing on the uh, what they call Deep Creek. It's called Deep Creek, but it's actually a little river. Parts of it are, would would qualify as a river. And you know, I lost I everything that I had that day. My phone, my uh, I don't think my keys are in there, but um, it, was, it was everything that you would carry with you went to the bottom of the river. My wallet. Uh, whatever else, I forgot what else I had. Uh, oh, my Apple Watch that I had just bought. It was a lot, lot of things. Um, and the story, you know the story that I, I said, the day before I had taught here about breathing, I said inhale and exhale. Inhale is when you say, I believe for the best. Exhale, I'm going to be okay no matter what happens. And uh, I just determined to, not freak out about it because it was e everything I had was on the bottom of that river and there was no way there's too much white water you can't dive it uh I just had to let it go and I I told the other guys I said I don't know how to explain this to you I said I'm letting this go I'm expressing gratitude Ken can take tomorrow off and drive me around let me start the whole process of getting a driver's license doing the whole thing because I've lost everything um and yet somehow before midnight tonight, when we drive back into Atlanta, I'm going to have all my stuff. I know that sounds like two opposing statements, but both of them are true. And I let it go. We drove all the way back, about an hour and a half back to uh, Blairsville. And I hear the phone ring. I'm in the bathroom. I hear Ken answer the phone. And uh, he's, he, he says, they've got your stuff. I said, who's got my stuff? And who are you talking to? He said, your mom. I said, my mom? What? And what happened was the, the uh, I had put everything in a plastic bag, and a guy just on a fluke decided to drive up from Savannah and scuba dive the river. I didn't even know that was a thing. And he said, I, he said, I looked at the bottom of the river, and I didn't see anything, but behind a boulder, I could see flapping in the current 
was a little piece of plastic like that. And I reached around there and he said, you know, you have to know how to, op- you, if you open a bag like that, everything will, you know, it, it, the, it's in the wrappers. And he didn't even know what Siri was. He said, I, I poured the water out of the bag and I pulled the phone out. And this, he said, some woman said, here's something you can say, call mom. And my Siri is set up to actually say, hey, Siri. It's like that's the verbal command. And he didn't even know what Siri was, but so he goes, he goes, call mom. My mom answers, and this guy says, uh, I have your son's stuff. She said, what are you, who are you? And she said, on the, I got it off the bottom of the river. And she's like, what? <laughs> has, has, has there been an accident? And um, so I called him, and I said, if you can stay there, we're, we're going to drive right back. We drove there. Nothing was damaged. Everything... I even had a check that somebody had written me that was folded up in there. The ink didn't even run. Uh, on, and it was underwater for th- at least three hours. Um, my watch still worked. It, the phone worked, everything. And we drove into Atlanta about 10 till midnight. And I said, well, I didn't know how this was going to happen. I said I would have all my stuff and everything would be working before midnight. And it is. Now, that's one of those things that, like, well, if it hadn't happened, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. It would have been inconvenient, and I would have, you know, gotten my credit cards again and everything. It's just, it, it was, a, I believe, a bona fide miracle. And a lot of times miracles um, are really just the suspension of time limits. And then you've got other scriptures like in First Peter where he says, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And so there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, cues from the scriptures about time not being a, a restraint. And then you get philosophical uh, messages about, does time even exist? Is it even a real thing? Uh, Jackie's familiar with Dr. Bruce Lipton, and he talks a lot about cell renewal, how that, you know, your, your, your body is renewed constantly. They're not e- doctors aren't even sure exactly why we age. Like, it, it comes from somewhere else because the cells in our body are constantly renewing so that brings up a whole other thing about cell memory and how much of our previous thoughts that we hold on to are really caused like we're we're recreate we're perpetuating the past because the way we look at it think about it talk about it dr joe dispenza talks about because he's before he did started doing what he does now he was a neuro uh, neurosurgeon so he talks a lot about brain activity and he says when you relive a hard memory from the past your body doesn't know it's not happening right now so that if you keep saying a thing to yourself or talking about a thing or running around your memory your body goes through all of that trauma over and over and over again so um the the first thing i want to show you is this is out of ecclesiastes and it's unusual the way it says it in the amplified classic version it's uh you know, Ecclesiastes 3 is all you know, it's that whole passage where he says, uh, do everything, there's a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, and he's made all things beautiful in its time. So a lot about, Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes, and a lot about Ecclesiastes is, is about time. But here in verse 15 in the Amplified Classic, it says, it says, that which is now already has been, and that which is to be already has been, and God seeks that which has passed by, so that history repeats itself. Very interesting. Uh, it, it, this is one of those verses that, you know, it's it's an enigma to me. I'm, I'm very drawn to this verse. I also, you know, I, I find it mysterious. And uh, what exactly does that mean? History repeats itself. And if it does, how much of it are we making happen? Which brings me to the second thing I want to show you. It's an Eckhart Tolle uh, quote. It says, um, if your mind carries a heavy burden of past, you will experience more of the same. The past perpetuates itself through lack of presence. The quality of your consciousness at this moment is what shapes the future. And I've taught on this for years about how um, you see and say, say and see. It's like you, you see things a certain way and you talk about it. And because you're talking about past experience, you're recreating the past. Um, you know, there's a story, I love the story about when um, 
Jesus goes to a man who was uh, at the pool of uh, Bethsaida. And uh, the man is uh, paralyzed. He can't move. And so he says, Jesus says, um, he approaches him and says, do you need anything? What can I do for you? And so the man goes into this story. I assume this is an urban legend. But there was a legend at that part of the world at that time that periodically an angel would come and, and King James says, trouble the waters. And when the waters were troubled, when there was activity, that was a little window of time. If you could get in there, if you could get in the water, uh, it was like an apparition site. They, you, you would be healed. So he says, is it 18 years? Is it 18 or 35? There's two. Is that what it is? All right. In excess of 30 years, 35, 38, somewhere in there, he says, I've been sitting by this pool for all these years, and every time the water is troubled, everybody else starts diving in there, and there's nobody, I don't have anybody to pick me up and put me in the water. And so that's why, that's why I'm in this condition. And what's interesting is Jesus completely goes asymmetrical on him. He's, it's like he doesn't even respond to the man's story. All he says is, well, stretch forth your hand, you'll be, and, and uh, oh, no, take up your bed and walk. Uh, he says, take up, and the, the man is healed. What's interesting to me about that story, there's other, there's other instances of Jesus healing in the, in the four Gospels, healing people. What's interesting about this, and um, if any of you have ever told a sad story over and over again, you'll know exactly what I mean by this. Sometimes you're in the middle of telling a story, and you've rehearsed it so many times that it, it's nearly like you can say it on autopilot. Like I find this is true for me, it's true for a lot of people, especially as you get older. You kind of get your stories, and your stories get locked in. Like just in the years since my parents moved across the street before my dad passed a couple years ago from my aunt and uncle, I've, I've been with them a lot more in the last few years than I was in the early part of my life. And I've been with them enough now. I, I was already this way with my parents. Like if something came up, I could, I could predict the story my dad was about to tell. Just because I knew him so well, I knew like, oh, this is when you always tell that story about the thing. I got to a place I could even do that with my aunt and uncle. Like we've rehearsed their story so many times. Because as you get older, I'm just telling you, unless you really stay active, new stuff stops happening to you. Do you understand? Like when you're young and you're experiencing the world, you have all these new adventures. As you get older, you kind of get them locked in. These are my stories. My grandmother used to watch soap operas every afternoon. She called them her stories. I got to see, I got to see my stories. And boy, you did not interrupt Addie Mae when she was watching those stories because she believed those people at General Hospital was real. I mean, she, she, uh, you know, she'd pray for them, and. <laughs> <laughs> two things I knew because I stayed with my grandparents a lot you didn't talk during grandma's stories and you didn't talk during the news because when granddaddy was watching the news because they wasn't on 24 hours back then it was like my granddaddy would stand in front of the TV like this and he'd go shh and you'd be like I'm not saying shh you know just, I just learned just go mute because he's just going to shush you um, but we all get our stories and, the, you know, I'm obviously, mine are galvanized. I mean, I've told mine, a lot of my stories have been incorporated into my, you know, they're like my, my parables. And some of you could probably anticipate the story I'm about to tell. Uh, because I, you know, like, well, that's the story I tell when I talk about that thing. And my stories are good. I mean, I, I try to keep them, I, I gotta keep them freshened up a little bit, you know. Sometimes I'll tell it from a little bit different perspective but when you when you're with somebody for a while you kind of you kind of learn their stories and stories aren't bad it's good to have a testimony but if it's something negative you don't realize every time you tell that negative thing you're recreating parameters for yourself and so if, if this man has been by that pool for 38 years think about how many times he's told that story how many times would you have told that story in nearly 40 years I mean, it's, it's nearly to the point that's kind of his thing now. I'm not saying he enjoyed being paralyzed. I'm just saying that's kind of his thing. When somebody asks, what are you doing? He's, that's, 
he tells his story. Well, I've been here for 38 years. It probably look around and say, I've been here longer than anybody else out here. And there's never anybody to put me in the water or whatever. And Jesus, it's so interesting because Jesus doesn't engage with him. He completely changes the energy. In other words, he's, he's basically saying, don't tell that story again. That, telling that story one more time is going to add another year to this thing. And that's why when I use terms like change the energy, I, I really mean that. Because you get, there's an energy that's on your words. I mean, I, sometimes I'll find myself doing it. And I'll hear, uh, I'll start to tell something in the inner voice that I believe is the Holy Spirit. Says to me, really, are you really going to tell that again? Really? I mean, what, what's the point of telling that again? Um, and sometimes, you, you know, you're not even looking for pity or anything. It's just that's something to talk about. That's what, you know. Or, or sometimes somebody tells you their story and you want to either one-up them or fellowship with them. It's like, oh, I can relate because a, a similar thing happened to me. And that's not altogether wrong. When I took pastoral counseling in college, you know, they said the number one rule is don't ever refer to yourself. Well, I break, break that rule all the time. And it's not just because I'm self-absorbed. It's just that's the, only, that's the way I see the world. It's like, well, I went through a similar thing, and this is what happened to me. I'm not, I'm not just trying to talk about me. I mean, believe me, I'm an only child. I've been accused of it. Uh, but I'm, I want people to, I want it to be real to them and say, well, this is what I did when I was in a similar situation. This is what I learned from a similar thing. Because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to connect with them. I'm not trying to make it all about me. I'm trying to make them understand what you're going through is not that unusual. It's terrible, but other people have been through a thing. And now I've kind of even, I've kind of even evolved from that. Now I've gotten to where when I do talk to somebody, I kind of just let them tell their thing now. Because sometimes I have realized in recent years when you go back to telling your story, it nearly um, lessens the impact of theirs. And sometimes you just need to let somebody sit with their pain and process it and talk it through and not even try to make it make sense to them. Um, so I've even evolved away from just telling my, my story. It's like, you know what, just tell yours. Because what happened to me may be irrelevant to you and for one thing is for definite definitely sure is when when you're going through something terrible and somebody tries to make you feel better by telling you something worse that happened to them that doesn't help all that does is minimize what you're going through um, and now that I do believe is, is someone being self-absorbed because somebody else's problem is completely original to them and it really has little if anything to do with what happened to me so I don't think it's an either or I think it's a yes and I think there's some conversations where it's helpful to tell what happened to you there's other especially especially if somebody says what did you do when you were in this situation and then if that's the if that's the setup by all means tell your tell your thing if not, sometimes it's better just to let somebody talk and let them, let them have their, um, their suffering. But also be aware that if you want to change something, you do have to change the story. Nothing changes until you change your story. If when you tell a story, you're always the victim in the story, then all you're doing is victimizing yourself. And at some point, you end up doing something worse to yourself than the person who victimized you did to you. Understand? So there is something, whether you call it spin or editing the story, you have to retell it in a way that if, if it doesn't make you the hero, at least it makes you not be the victim. Okay? Because otherwise you're, you're constantly prophesying to yourself and over a certain period of time it starts this cyclical action where you say a thing and it just keeps the it just keeps it going you you talk about how bad things are and then things are bad again and one thing is for sure and I've said all these things to you before but they bear repeating if you say well I'll stop talking about this when it stops that that's not the way it works 
it's sometimes it's your continuing to talk about it that is perpetuating it. Or if you say, I'll be grateful when I have something to be grateful for, but that you'll ne- it'll never happen. You have to be grateful for what you have now. And then the circumstances change. They, they bow to your gratitude. You, the, uh, it's always about changing that energy. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this TikTok thing, Melissa Hall sent me this the other day, and the only thing I know about this guy, he's on TikTok as uh, Luke Therapy. I don't, I don't know anything about him. I just liked the way, it's very similar to things I've said to you. I just like the way he explained this. So I'm just going to show you this, and, and uh, then we'll talk about it a little bit. So I truly think this is one of the most profound things a human being can realize and it will reduce so much stress, so much anxiety and it's by changing your understanding of time because right now you probably view time as past, present, future but it's almost as though these things are equal as if they're like places that you you can go to. So the past was one the place that you were in and the future is a place that you'll one day be in. Now to us three-dimensional beings that's really not true and it's a really unhelpful way to think about time because there is no to you there is no past present future that past and future isn't a real place all there is is memories now and imagination of what future nows could look like but it's not real now okay only now is real so i really don't want you to overthink this because the moment you overthink it you lose it the only thing that's ever real to you is the present moment So there's only memories now and imagination. And another way of saying that is there is only now thought, because memories only exist in the mind. It's not real. The past no longer exists. It's only exists in memories. So there's now thoughts and more thoughts. So if you ever feel like the time is affecting you of future things causing you stress or past things causing you sadness, all that is happening is you are thinking about them because you will never leave the present moment. There is no future that you can get to. It's not a real place. It exists only in the mind. And this is why I say that time moves through you because you will never leave the present moment. There's no future that you can ever arrive to. This is where your entire life will unfold. It is the present moment, now. So to fill your now with stress, to get to some future, because you want that future, because you think it's gonna be better, it's complete insanity, because now is the only thing that's real. So when you move your attention into your now, what is your now? Look up from your phone and look around, that is your now. That's the only thing that's real. Everything else is just a thought in the mind. So when you move your attention fully into the present moment, no longer lost in the mind, it is the fastest way of reducing the suffering of the mind and finding peace. I truly think this is one of the most profound things a human being. Isn't that good? I think that's, I think that's so profound that I want to stop right there. I want to do about a five-minute meditation. Um, you know, in uh, uh, the book of Psalms, when David would talk, there would be a break where he would use the word selah, S-E-L-L-A-H. And it, because the Psalms originally were um, songs. They are songs. And so the sila would be like a musical interlude where you would think about the words that David, the lyrics of the song, and just let them ruminate. Uh, you can go take the lights down. Just let them sort of ruminate and, um, and meditate on them. So I want you to, I, I think what this guy said is so profound and so true while those words are still right here fresh in our consciousness. Go ahead, you take them down. I want to, um, I, I want to have a, do a little meditation. If you if you've never meditated with us and you like to, just uh, sit up straight, both uh, feet on the floor. Charles, you can go ahead and start some music, and sit up straight. You want to make your body like a, a channel for the energy to flow through. And uh, mostly meditation is about breathing. So what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in through the nose and hold it and then we're going to breathe out through the mouth and it's not just about relaxation it's about embracing the now we're we're too preoccupied with past and future we just are Um, so most of these things you know most of these things you need to be reminded of because the the past and the future are like the undertow in the ocean This week when we were in Daytona, uh, 
the undertow was really, really strong. And the, the lifeguards on the beach, you could hear those sirens going off like every few minutes where they were, you know, bringing somebody in, bringing somebody in. And I thought that's the way, the siren is like the Holy Spirit. It's constantly bringing you back into the now. Don't, don't, don't go too far out in the past. Don't go too far out in the future. You're going to drown out there. You need to be, you need to be in the safety of the now. So, with your eyes closed, sitting up straight, in through the nose, let's, let's, let's inhale, fold it, exhale through the mouth, in through the nose, it's nitrous oxide, hold it, exhale, in through the nose, inhale, you to relax, but I want you to relax into the now. The past is the past. The future is the future. Neither of them really are real now. All that is real is now. The only that only place that exists right now is here. Continual and uh, constant in your breathing. Keep going in, hold, and out. If you want to make a mudra with your hand, you can do that, or just put your hands in a position of receptivity. Just open up your palms to receive. Just become a receptacle. Stay consistent in your breathing. Breath and spirit are used interchangeably in the scriptures. Old Testament, Ruach. New Testament, Numa. Ruach in the Hebrew. Numa in the Greek. Spirit in the now. Holy Spirit, bring us fully into the now. Forgetting those things which are behind. Holy Spirit, bring us fully into the now. Help us understand the I am. Not the I was, not the I will be. The I am. They that come to God must believe that He is. I'm going to make some declarations. I want you to repeat after me. Holy Spirit, bring me fully into the now. You say that. Holy Spirit. Say it again. Holy Spirit, bring me fully into the now. Say it.
Holy Spirit, bring me fully into the now. You say it. Bring my mind into the now. Bring my emotions into the now. Bring my memories into the now. Bring my stories into the now. Bring my reality into the now. Bring my personality into the now. Bring my weak points into the now. Bring my body into the now. Bring every cell in my body. Bring my breath into the now. Bring my dreams into the now. Bring my aspirations into the now. Bring my past, present, and future into the now. Holy Spirit, bring me fully into the now. Now just breathe that. Keep breathing. Into the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, let's begin to breathe out of it. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In. Out. In. Out. The presence of God is very real right now. Whenever you are ready, just stand up. Acknowledge the presence of God however you do. If you if you want to raise your hands, you can do that. If you want to stand very still, you can do that. Just be aware of God. Be aware of spirit. Be aware of presence.
Hold this moment. It's a sacred moment. Hold it. Whatever's happening in this moment, I speak it into your spirit, your soul, your body to take it with you today. Carry the presence of this moment. God's with you all the time, but there's something that happens when we're all together. It's, it's different. So whatever this is, right now, embrace it, take it with you. Let it heal you. feel anything in your spirit that you received during that that you want to share? Any, you want to say anything about it or just from right where you are? I just want to ponder it in your heart. Jeff? I felt it too. I felt it too. I know exactly what you mean. Anybody else?
good memory. That's awesome. I just wish they had a deal. You know, we have one. That's awesome. You know, Louise Hay said, I don't try to fix my problems. I fix my thinking, and that fixes my problems. And if you didn't hear what Brenda said, she had a crisis this past week, and her granddaughter said, before you react, she said, what would Bishop do? She said, breathe in, breathe out. She took her through a meditation, but she said actually helped her center herself, and the thing got resolved. And a lot of times, it's your overreaction to a negative thing that actually makes it, it it's not the thing itself, it's your, your reaction to the thing. And sometimes getting quiet and centered in a crisis moment is the smartest thing you can do. Because sometimes panicking, freaking out, it's like, this is only going to make this thing worse. So let me find the eye of the storm and let me get in that and the you know, the thing will get resolved. Absolutely. Anybody else? Speak up from back there. Hey, Constance. Right. Thank you, sweetheart. I love you. Uh, yeah. Um, I honestly, at this point, I'm learning that now too. It's like sometimes just you just let people have their. Uh, have their crisis and kind of gently move them through it. Like let them say their thing because you don't want to dishonor, you know, somebody. But to say, all right, well, then now let's breathe. And, and most times people will, they'll have the answer within themselves. I mean, they really will. That's good. Thank you. Anybody else? being in peace where you are even though the future doesn't look a certain way or the way you envisualize it because you know you can have you know from a to z in future plans right and none of them work but being content where you are and i just felt myself in this peace like uh and loving where i'm at right now that that doesn't matter because i could have a million plans and they not work out but being content here and then watch and ha having this peace that whatever happens is going to be great. It's right. the most important. It totally makes sense. It's the most important thing. That's why I liked that guy, what he said. Even the way he said it, he said, the future's not real. You can't go there. It's not a place you can go. And uh, it was like, it's just the way he said it. That's like, that sounded so true. Like, it's not real. I'm like, you're right. It's not real. <laughs> Uh, the only thing that's real is right now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I'm telling you, this isn't just some kind of new age platitude. I'm t there's, there is strength and serenity. There really is. And when you freak out over stuff and react to it, it's like, it's like them coming to Jairus and saying, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. And he goes, Shh, be not afraid, only believe. In other words, just if you can't do anything, then just put it in neutral. And, 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 you know, don't overreact. All right. Good. Uh, remain standing. Let's do the outro. And remember, we will not be here next month. We'll be on the beach. So come down and be with us on the beach. All you have to do, go to my cover photo on my Facebook page. All the information is there. And, uh, I mean, I, I know there's people staying in Brunswick. They're staying in St. Simons, Jekyll. All, there's plenty of places to choose from. You can go low. You can go low dollar high dollar it's er everything is there so um i want to see i want to see you there and then we'll be back here the first sunday of september whenever that is
And thank you, Marshall. Tell Marshall we appreciate him being here today. Let's play this while you remain standing. Contributing to Metron is quick and easy. You can give any time using any smartphone. Text the amount you'd like to donate to 404-620-5044. You will then receive a notification that you successfully completed your donation. You may also visit missionthenow.com and click the support tab to give there as well. When you contribute to Metron, you're also donating to the charity or organization of the month. Thank you for your investment into Metron. If you have cash, just pay it forward. Bless somebody. If you have a check, make it to JESM, and Danny will be back there in the back to receive it. God bless you. Go in peace. I'll see you in St. Simons.